right, all right, all right. We are back. Did you miss us? That's what we need to know. Did do you think they missed us, Dustin? Bro, it's been a minute. I mean, I ain't, man. I probably yeah. missed. I probably missed them. So yeah, yeah we miss y'all. We miss y'all. So, anyways, uh, we apologize for missing a week. We think we think we missed a week. Um, honestly, I was had a bad sinus infection last week, and Dustin was thrashing to get ready for this uh, big stretch of racing he's been doing. So. Anyways, we couldn't get it done, but we're back here for your listening, viewing pleasure this week, and we got a lot of stuff to cover. So, um, yeah, first and foremost, thank you for supporting us and Red Hill uh, Racing Podcast. Uh, we really appreciate that. And, of course, we got to shout out our sponsors as well. We got the University of Wynn, still clicking off wins weekly, uh, BMF Motorsports, Max ECU, which let's just go ahead and tell tell the school members or everybody that's listening in addition to the vance and race suit that's being given away to school members this year courtesy of platinum general services and ralphie um the school is also going to give away a max ecu sport so yeah it uh there's lots of good thanks steve for the, the hookup and thanks yeah. to the school for forking out the dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah yeah mr nichols got us a good deal on one uh you know as a podcast supporter we appreciate him and their support so uh we're gonna hook a school member up at the end of the year at our yearly awards banquet and uh that'll be cool so anyways um big news there then we got montgomery motorsports uh mps racing penske racing shocks Hard times parts and service, which I happen to be repping tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, He'll believe probably, shirt. probably my some, favorite shirt, to be honest. Probably got some baby spit up on it somewhere, too. It's all right. <laughs> then we got a uh, DME racing, Schnitz racing. I was thinking about this, by the way. I'm gonna have to talk to my man Trevor and Ryan because, uh, dude, I don't think I have any Schnitz racing shirts, which is weird. Unbelievable. Do you have any? Uh, yeah, older ones that Dave used to send me for like number one qualifiers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like I probably have like I, I remember one that I used to wear, but I don't even know. Anyways, I need I need yeah. some Schnitz racing shirts. You just Brock's gotta hit up Grandpa Dave, bro. I know, I know. He'll he'll help <laughs> me out. Talking about shirts, Brock's performance, man. I seen somebody walking down to. Did I ever tell you this? I seen somebody walking down my like uh my little town. This was I don't know. It could have been a month, year ago, wearing a Brock shirt. And I was like, holy shit. And then I realized that I had so many Brock shirts. I'm pretty sure I donated some to our local EAUS outlet. So they were repping Brock's performance on the <laughs> I was about to ask streets. you if they got that from you at a Goodwill oh, yeah. or something. Oh, yeah, Goodwill for sure. <laughs> you know, this dude was probably methed out too, but hey, it's all good. He was hey, man. Brock's. He all was publicity is good baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um all right wow. he was working Damn. on his uh yoga that's right <laughs> he was out there bending and tweaking <laughs> yeah gosh man, you we... need to do yoga right now ben's oh got a messed up neck and you know i'm not real flexible so we we maybe hey, we my don't... neck is killing me right now y'all um <laughs> that's an understatement and it just comes oh, and goes oh after you get done going sponsors i got man I we got are something. off track and we can't even make it through the damn sponsors yeah i don't it's know is my <laughs> internet batter is yours no nah, you're fine bro in there okay um mtc engineering which we still have a gen 2 clutch to give away to our podcast subscribers by the way bst wheels uh brock's performance and bst and uh worldwide bearings giving away some uh wheel set we got monster race products platinum general services and i already said it but worldwide bearings all right not safe for work We've already rambled and went off track just getting through our sponsors. So y'all are probably in for a ride tonight, today, tomorrow, whenever the heck y'all listen to it. What's happening in Mr. 43X's world? I don't. Well, there is this. Okay. I was just not the bracket finals at South Georgia. And I don't know what his name is. And Jerry Turner can back this up. But every time I seen this guy that worked at the track that was prepping the track and all over the place, to be honest, bro, he was like your brother. My brother. <laughs> every time I seen him, I thought of you because he had a mullet, but it was like a permed in the back. But the whole <laughs> the whole front and the sides were pretty thin. Like it was just the very back. And I'm on right now, I'm on the uh South Georgia's Facebook page just trying to see if there was a picture of this guy. 
to show you because mm -hmm. every time I seen this guy on the track or running around, I thought yeah, of you. I'm like, that's Ben. Like he looks just By like the me. way. In He's case even got the little can't pepper see with the background. Look, yeah. this thing that y'all listeners, hold on, I got to turn my background off so y'all can get the full effect. You guys asked for it, and I've delivered. Look at this thing. Look, I'll do a little head shake, even though my neck hurts. How's oh, that? The pain. Yeah, it wobbles. Oh. Look, it's getting right, y'all. This is for y'all. Y'all asked for it. Trust me. I ain't running around with a mullet for no reason. I don't know. I'm going to be honest. Once it gets like this, it's pretty badass. I mean... As Jeff said, it's got magical powers. You just gotta fluff. Disappointed it in the back. that I didn't pre-plan this and look this guy up because, bro, sounds epic. It sounds epic. Do you want to talk <laughs> about your weekend? I mean, that was recent. Should we start with some older shit or what? Um, you go ahead and go over the all right, all right. mid midwestern. Even though he's going to get upset that I said that. Jeremy <laughs> England, Mister yeah. England. Um, look, we gotta give props where props are due. Me and Dustin yeah, about a good show watched a lot of let me pull it up so i don't slander it too mad the midwest sportsman motorcycle racing uh that's why i said the, he would get upset because i yeah. call it midwestern <laughs> but jeremy we uh we got nothing but praise for you man um seriously uh dust and i watched a lot of that it was enjoyed the Mania. announcing with bradley and him and then the regular Gosh. announcer it was but, good between the regular announcer um Bradley Grothis and even Jeremy, like he, like it took me a minute. I think I was, I was uh, feeling good one night and I messaged him. I was like, dude, are you announcing? He's like, yeah, why? What's up? And I was like, damn, it sounds good, bro. Um, so yeah, look, first off, the announcing was top notch. Y'all did great, all three of y'all. Um, and I know Bradley was probably the main, main guy, but Jeremy was on there quite a bit that I heard. I, Dustin and I both agreed, like, just, even if we weren't watching, just listening and hearing all the backstories y'all told on each racers and, and, you know, if they had a new bike build this year, like it yeah, was props just remembering great. all that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was phenomenal. <clears throat> and then naturally the racing was out of this world too. I mean, you, you got some just straight killers up there that were racing for what was it? It was 10 grand. The, the big day, it was 5,000 and Iron Man the other day. Right. And yep. then they even had a gambler's race in five sixty. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, especially if you're into delay box racing, you need to check that out. Um, check out uh, Mr. England and his his little mini series that he's been uh, doing. And, uh, and it seemed like a great time. I really enjoyed watching. I watched uh, as much as I could. So anyways, we wanted to shout them out. Um, and we also wanted to give some uh, props to the race winners for the weekend. And uh, the gamblers race, I believe it was Friday night. Um the Roe boy. Yeah, it came down to the Roe brothers. Uh, Rashad Roe from Roe Brothers Racing was victorious over the always awesome Sesley Shell House. We love the Shell Houses. I think um, she was last year's winner, right? Or the first the first race winner look, this year. You roll into Kill Care Dragway, which is like home track for the Shell Houses. Um, well, a lot of them Midwest people, uh, Jeremy and them as well. But like, you don't want to mess around with people at their home track, bro. They uh Fafo. They play. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> Fafo up in there. So uh that was cool. And I I want to say they had like if it wasn't the same dial in in the final, it was within a hundred or so. I think they both dialed like five. It was heads up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. I like that. I was like, hell yeah. I was actually out in the garage yeah. working, putting the tire on my bike or something. I was just listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, cool. no, not the final. That was the next morning. Um they didn't finish. No, that the gamblers they finished. Yeah, yeah the gamblers they finished. Yeah. Then moving on to the five sixty class, our buddy Jordan Weiss, he uh he qualified number one with a um perfect lot dead zero. Oh shit! Yeah, I had to read that. I saw the five sixty with a zero, but he paired that with a perfect reaction time. Damn, Jeremy, you should have coughed up some money for that. Lord, Man, that had to be pass. worth two hundred dollars, right? I know, Jordan. Better better hit up uh, Mr. England and claim that cash he owes you. He, he owes you something for that. <laughs> a hug, a high five, or something. Special parking. Shit, something. shit. I don't know about a hug. He needs some cash for that. <laughs> um, all right, mm. moving on. Uh, Jordan was uh, – I, I think he went um, – Okay, yeah, okay. I'm reading through it. I was I didn't want to go off the cuff, but yeah. So Jordan qualified number one and made it all the way to the finals. Um unfortunately, his luck ran out there and Mr. David Young 
pulled off the victory in five six. On a brand new build, like the bike's first race. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's incredible. Yeah. Is that what he rode last weekend? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh anyways, congrats to Mr. Young and Mr. Weiss on that. Then we get went into the big 128 bike shootout, 10K to win. Um let's see. Um sorry, I got a little sidetracked. Hold on. I know the semis <clears throat> the semis come down to father and son and um it could have been a father and son final. Well, go ahead and you tell that part then, because I was John to had to race. <clears throat> John had to race Joe Clemmy in the semis. Joe won, and then it, uh, Dalton was sitting on a bye. Oh, I got you. And then Joe had to race Dalton in the final. <clears throat> and to note, there was um, some in team money moving, so that means that the race wasn't really split like it normally would be. Like there was some um, some less of money splitting uh, going down because nice. there was agreements between, of course, father and son and David Young. You know, one of us win, we're going to toss the other one this or whatever. You know, so interesting. So it was a pretty big payout, mm -hmm. is what you're saying? Payday. Yeah, there was some good chunk of money handed over, um, and Dalton took it and uh, the helmet trophy and went to the his house. Yeah, well, I. I... I saw quite a few passes in the 10,000 race and I'll tell you what they were, they weren't Some good messing racing. around. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I, I specifically remember watching, I think it was two rounds in a row. I'm, it was, I'm going to say it was probably fourth or fifth and fifth round, something like that. And just, yeah, I could tell the Markhams, they were on fire. Uh, and David Young was running good as well. So, uh, it, it was exciting to watch. And then finally they wrapped up their weekend with, this was the Ironman race. Right. And, yeah. uh, it came down to um, Big Red, David Bashera and Nicholas Bowling. Um, I was about to say it. I'm like, come on, you got yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I had to find it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it says uh, in the write-up, it says both of them were ripping off double O's uh, pretty consistently throughout that race, which no surprise. And, uh, yeah, the young Nicholas Bowling got the got the win over Big Red. Uh for the Iron Man race, so old school wins, old school against new school, OKZ right. versus Busa, and a young gun against the older guy, right? Yeah, yeah, young gun yeah. on the old bike and the older it, guy. Yeah, that's kind of odd, ain't it? Right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And I said older guy, David. If in yeah, case yeah, you yeah, not old, hear this, not old, old guy, I did not but call older you old. guy. I mean, me and Ben are hear this. Old. I'm sure you're gonna give me shit anyway. Yeah, I feel like I'm about 105 fucking years old right now. It's <laughs> not fun, y'all. I was telling Tamara we was uh, watching it, and I was trying to, like, show her, you know, like on the Motor Mania, which is really good camera angles, it'll show the finish line. And I was, like, trying to pay attention to see who crosses first and by how much. And uh, when David Young lost in the uh, main race, Tamara was like, oh, David, like, because he <laughs> took a whole bike, like it, the other, you know, and yeah. he was racing um, Jordan, and Jordan – Sent him down that oh, breakout breakout man. road, and Tamer was like, "Oh, David," because I was trying to, you know, make her yeah. pay attention. Like, tell me who crosses first and how much, you know. And right. her first response was, "Oh, David, <laughs> 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 too oh, much," man. you know. Yeah, and I told David that this weekend, and he laughed. I was like, "That's probably the only time my wife's ever allowed to say, oh, David." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's funny. But uh, I just, you know, just showing her the things that I look look at when i'm watching the video yeah. and it was pretty cool that um she took note of that and caught it pretty quick that he hogged the stripe up some but uh also this is probably a perfect opportunity to say red hill racing y'all we're fair and balanced what's it, who says that because is that like a news station or something that's probably lying through their teeth listen you most of y'all probably know Mr. England have had had some issues in the past, and we got over them, and so has Dustin and him. And we are yeah, not yeah. we are not too proud to admit like when things are right. And that race was right, y'all. So well, we care about the sport, yeah. and as a, as this, you know, somebody I'm that just cares saying about the like sport, there's some other yeah. media places that just like to do what yeah, the hell they're they not going to be neutral. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like media should be neutral, and For sure. uh, and that's why we wanted um, to hit up uh, this race because it was a our great whole race. damn world needs to be more neutral. You know, but uh, don't get us not get on that. But uh, well, I know, but I'm saying like, yeah. to your point, like we need to acknowledge good things. And that was a great race for. Well, yeah, uh, for because the sport. If, if we 
um, talk about positives, it makes people look forward going to race and not being talked about on the internet, you know, negative. Jeremy, so. just save me and Dustin a spot in the next race. Man, I don't Count know. Like I want to. I know you I would, can't schedule it. That's why yeah. I'm telling him to just mark us down. Yeah. We're in there. He just he'll just you just tell us, man. Like, hey, y'all are coming to this race. Be like, all right, whatever. I mean, I ain't going to say that I didn't wish I was there racing, but I couldn't tell you in the first the year that I was coming to that race. You know yeah, what I mean? But you so, also knew you're going to the, you know, the last race of SDBA and the last race. Of well, I scheduled that series. Oh, yeah. no, I'm just saying you schedule <laughs> that. Um, anyways, that was a great race. Uh, that was cool I mean, that we got I to watch the, it. I am the guy that's, a, you know, race one of five races in a row just now. I so know, I know. if I would have went you. to Jeremy's, that would have been six races in a row well you might have taken weekend off had you won um probably not because my whole my whole season uh, to be honest the only race i cared about was the one that i sucked at this past weekend uh, well so. you didn't suck so and there's that too no um, i didn't suck i, I mean i just we'll didn't get to do that it. we'll get yeah. to that you didn't you didn't have the results that you were seeking and that happens a lot when when we play this thing called racing you know yeah. Um, what else happened in between now and whenever the hell we last recorded? We had some NHRA action, right? I don't think um, we even re talked about the U.S. Nationals, right? No, no, oh, we shit. didn't. We gotta go back another race. I'll pull that up right now. Um, well, that was that was uh, these past two NHRA NHRA races have been very interesting to me. Oh no um, doubt. I'm gonna speak some truth. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk what Dustin thinks, and this is just my personal opinion when we get to talking about it. But go for it. Um, so you I've been to start with the U.S. Nationals. Yeah, sure. I don't know the results. I guess you can go over them, but uh, I, I know who won, of course, and I know who raced in the finals, but I don't. I can't remember um, the details right now. Well, it was the the marathon I, of qualifying. Okay, which is the yeah. US before Nationals. before I want to talk about. Okay, so Angie brought out a brand new motorcycle at the U.S. Nationals, and I, this is the most craziest thing. Like the way th the world works, the it's like I don't know, it's a mystery. But so Chris Bostic goes down the racetrack and throws the parachute for the first time, and and which was super cool. And they're doing an interview, asking him how did it feel, you know, how did it go, and he's like, hey. you know, I didn't have to get on my brakes right away. I threw the chute. Started slowing the bike down, got on my brakes, and it was great. And he give a thumbs up to the camera, and then they go to the starting line. And Angie Smith is up there. And she lost her brakes, went into the sand. Like, ironically, the the, the next pass after they interviewed, like, the last thing they did was interview Chris about the shoot. And luckily, she, it was very graceful. Like, you know, she she come off the bike. It's kind of on her leg, but she pulled it out in the did pebbles. Did tear anything up? No, I mean they they didn't run the next qualifier because they wanted to get like all the the rocks and the dirt out of the the wheel bearings and stuff because I'm yeah. sure they got the caps off of them and probably put WD forty on them or something for speed. But um, it didn't hurt really anything bad. Like I mean the bike came for first round, you know, so obviously yeah. it wasn't terrible. I don't know the whole deal, but just the the way the universe works just blows my mind that Chris threw a shoot. They have an interview about that, and then they lose their brakes. And yeah. my only thing is on that, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that some pro stop motorcycles use that poly line for brake line. Like it's like almost like your air shifter line. And I just don't understand. Like, I feel like that we could just use braided lines, you know, now they didn't even break the lines on that system when they took it from her old bike to her new one, from what I understand, but it, it still somehow something happened and she went to use her brakes and they went nobody home. And she was doing a phenomenal job of, of riding the motorcycle in that situation because she was pump, 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 pump. The front she got the muscles, boy. She'd be in well, the gym at 4 a.m. <clears throat> she was pumping the front brakes and obviously you could see her and nothing was happening. And she kind of like stood up. I, I guess she was standing on the rear brakes. Like she was standing up on the bike, I guess, trying to like slow it down. And, uh, -huh. And then right, you know, when the when it hit, she just kind of went off to the left and the bike kind of slid up on her leg, but didn't hurt her or nothing. It looked like she just pulled it right out of the thick gravel. But um <clears throat> that was that was qualifying on, on uh, something that happened in qualifying. Yeah. I don't know the I can't remember the qualifying. I results. got it pulled up. I think this is correct, but if if it is, then man, it was just I mean, if you could write out 
like the players, like it went Gage number one, 680 with a nine. Matt Smith, number two, 681 with a six. Number three, John Hall, 683. Four, Richard Gadsden, 683. Four, Gianna, fifth, 685. Six, Angie, six, 685. Nine. Then we went Hector Jr. with a 686 and Chase a 688. And that was the top half of the field. So, yeah, it, uh, I know it took a uh, gauge and them a little bit to come around, I think. Right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah that, then, the, the, the newest thing is, you know, with these current rules is the, I'm pretty sure all the Suzuki's don't like the heat at this moment, but Vance and Hines and Suzuki's are um, for sure. The heat pulls them down. It takes, you know, some power away from them. So the weather has to be good for them to, to be able to, run up front to have a shot it's what i'm seeing yeah yeah well you know they, but they're, they change the rules to try and get some parody and and you know. i mean they're doing a good job like the, i think it's tight right now as long as the pot isn't you know the kettle's not calling the pot black i feel like that there was a round at the u.s nationals it might have been e4 that I feel like Matt should have went faster. I feel like that Matt should have. Uh, when you raced Angie, I got a, I got all this stuff pulled up. I'm looking at the overall. Matt um, and Angie raced in the semifinals, and Matt went a 684 to her quicker <clears throat> 682. It was it was a qualifier. It must have been Q4. Oh. Q4, M Matt didn't go as fast as I thought he should have went. Oh, when opinion. Gage went to the top. Yeah, yeah, Q4, when Gage went faster than Matt, I was like, Huh, because I was thinking Matt was going to pop off a 77 or something. And I actually messaged our man Steve Nichols and said, hey, what's up? Why is our bro holding back? Because he should have went faster. And Steve, I think I'd have to look at the message, but he was like, how did you how did you figure this up? I'm like, I just, I'm a racer. Like I, was, I know what Matt has done, and i seen him in these. I remember the weather conditions popped up, and I was looking at it, and I compared it to – the race that uh, Richard and Gage did terrible at. And I was like, man, when Gianna went really fast, what race was that? Was that uh, the oh, one sure, that was – You're just pulling too much brain power for me right now. I can't remember. It was the one before was. this one that they went to. It must have been the – Sonoma or something yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were – where uh, yeah, Gianna went like Sonoma. 204 or something. Yeah. And uh, for, uh, according to the weather that I had that I just seen real quick <clears> – <throat> Matt should have went at seventy something that that pass, so he must have missed a tune up or, or didn't use it, one or the other. Hmm. Not sure. Interesting observation there, sir. I mean, you know, I'm a bracket racer. Numbers <laughs> is my jam. You know. <laughs> well, we uh, yeah, the U.S. Nationals. We had a semifinals of teammates on both sides. Man, that was. That was pretty cool to see. So we had Mr. Gage versus uh, Mr. Richard. So we had yeah. all Vance and Hines, one semi. Um, they are both on the tree, 022 to an 028. So right there together. But uh, Gage managed to run quicker. He went a 680 with a four to Richard's 687. And then on the other side, you had Matt and Angie. You had the husband and wife going at it. Um Matt Matt did not cut Angie any slack. He was 18 to her 31. Unfortunately, he was about a hundredth behind. He went a 684 with a three to her 682. So let's she see, drove around 13. him. He was he should have been exactly one one hundredth behind. If I can do my math right. So yeah, she he out race. 60 footed and three her. And then at the eighth mile, she said, peace out and started driving away. Yeah. Well, it should have only been a no one margin. It was oh one oh yep yep um so that set up the final <clears throat> for Gage and Angie and uh yeah there was a I I do remember there was some chatter back and forth and you know on the inner tube uh during this weekend and uh I think they lit a little fire in uh, Mr Hollywood Herrera because he went to the finals and he was not cutting no one nothing he was perfect trip zip. Paired that with a 676 uh, to basically outrun Angie. She she wasn't bad. She was 038 and uh, 682, but uh, just 
Well, I don't know, man. Y'all, what do they say? Don't poke the bear. I mean, so this look, is you don't want to be poking <clears throat> poking the bears. I caught this in just the interview. So Eddie made changes to the bike to make it sixty foot, right? To to try to win the race. And Gage got on the bike and said, "What'd you do this clutch when he pulled it in?" He instantly felt it, felt the the difference. And you know, Andrew had you know I messaged him. And he said there was so you much going to share on. This? <clears throat> no, no. I mean, it's not like nothing bad. Oh, okay. It was, <laughs> it was just that uh, you know Andrew said that there was so much going on. Like that side of the track gets shade, and and you know the clutch was changed, and they were worried about his light and this and that, and <clears throat> and then he just goes out there and trips zips. Thank you. Had a delivery. Oh, nice. She didn't want to say hi though. Oh well, hi. <laughs> yeah but uh it was uh for them even it was a stressful uh final because there was a lot of things that they changed to try to win you know and um now Move that the, the suzukis sink, are right? heavy i'm i've noticed that uh they're having to really get after those bikes up front to be able to to, to compete you know yeah. they i mean even in that final right there <laughs> gauge was almost five hundreds faster to the 60 foot just to be able to, 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 you know, to win. And he, it showed at the back, but in my opinion, we have seen a little trickle of Matt and them have good 60 foots. And if they do, they're going to be fast, fast, oh, yeah. fast. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I pulled that up. Andrew was one Oh nine to gauges one Oh four five. So, yeah. um, yeah, it, it's a big difference there. Basically, they they're back half and pretty pretty good. You know, it's all mile per hour, and it all leads down to, <clears throat> I think, from what I'm understanding, it's just weight. You know, the Suzukis are so much heavier. <clears throat> I mean, even Gino mentioned that in the interview that uh, when he pushes the bike, it's so heavy compared to what he's used to pushing, which is a really. Uh, person that's raced a lot of different pro stop motorcycles so it's a it's a valuable uh opinion in my opinion mm -hmm. which you know it's it's good to see gino back out there yeah yeah it's cool it's uh <clears throat> it's good to see a motorcycle that's built to be rode somebody out there campaigned it and he um at indy look you know he had to learn he's got to learn but uh, he did a lot better this past weekend yeah, for sure. So that was U.S. Nationals. Should we roll right into Reading? Yeah. All right. You, I know you got that pulled up, right? Well, I did until I oh, backed shit. out and went. To, I can do it. <laughs> I'm right here at it. <clears throat> I'll get it pulled up, too. So qualifying, to be honest, <clears throat> when I was kind of trying to watch qualifying as it was going on while I was racing, um, I was pretty fired up at first. You know, at first it was – uh. I think it was Q2, there was raining 680s. Like it was, uh, let's see if my thing will refresh. <clears throat> my internet ain't real happy with me right now. Well, it's funny. I'm looking back through the results right now, and, and you were talking about 60 foots, and it doesn't look like anyone was 60 foot and very well at uh Not at this race. Grove. The track was not having it. So Q1... You know, Matt pops off a 680 with a one, and Hector Jr. was 82. I'm just going to do the top five. Richard was 84, Gage was 85, and John Hall was 89. <clears throat> and then Q2, this is when it was like crazy. Matt was still sitting. He didn't go faster. He was still sitting number one with a 680 with a one. Gage goes 80 with a four. Richard goes 80 with a seven. Hector Jr. goes 82. Steve Johnson goes 85. So I was like, man, like three bikes going 680. Now, if they all picked up and then Matt didn't, that's to me is like, why? You know, because obviously the weather got better if everybody else went faster. Q3, Matt didn't go no faster. <clears throat> Gage went a 74. Richard still sitting with an 80 with a 6. Hector Jr., 82. Angie Smith improved and went an 84 with a 9. <clears throat> and then... Q for the last qualifier, Gage goes a 74 with a three. The final qualifying was a 74 with a three. Matt went a 79 with a five. Richard was still at 80 to six. 
Hector was 82, and Angie was sitting there with 84 of the zero. <clears throat> Mark Ingerson, I just want to point out, six, yeah, 84 of the six. Steve Johnson, you know, seventh place <clears throat> qualifier, 85 of the nine, which is Chris Bostic, 87 of the nine. Uh, Chase, 88. Uh, John Hall is uh, 689. That's the top 10. <clears throat> that's, I mean, you know, that's pretty good. Pretty good little show in there. I mean, what the fuck? What'd you do now? Fucking spider was crawling up my leg. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought you seen something that I missed. No, I, I, I was like, I try not to panic right away, but so <laughs> something crawling up your leg. To, it's fast, like, damn. to fast forward to the semis, that's where, in my opinion, it got interesting at this race. Um, Matt had to race Richard. Gage had to race Hector Jr. Everybody's thinking, I don't care who you are, man, Matt and Rich. I mean, Richard and Gage is going to be in the finals again if if Richard can beat Matt. That's what everybody's thinking, right? Well, part of that happened. Matt's bike shut off. I, don't, I remember, I can't remember what they said the problem was. There was a problem with the bike, and it shut off, and Richard took the win. Now, saying that, Richard was 015 on the tree, 687. Made a clean lap, you know, right down Broadway. And then it was up to Gage to meet his teammate in the final. And, man, you know, Gage has been really pushing his riding, you know, because they're not as fast as they was. And he was 002 red. And Hector Jr. was 028 and went a 88. And Gage went a 90. Now, he did shut it off early. He just – Gage just went 170. So not really sure what he was going to run. Um, thousand foot, he was 600s faster – than uh Hector Jr. So if you math be mathing, he was at least gonna go eighty two, you know, potentially. Um hard to say. Um one oh six sixty, so not his best, but decent. But if you notice Matt was one oh six sixty against Richard in the semis. So if Matt's bike didn't shut off, I think it was about to to lay one down in my opinion, because he was quite a bit faster than his qualifier to the Yeah, and uh, he he posted that it was a faulty fuel pump switch. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll tell you what. If that's the case, then, like, I don't know. They have some shitty luck. Because, I mean, it's it seems like it's always, like, no joke, like, what, a $5 fucking part or something? B-twin I mean, life, man. They'd be shaking them apart. That is true. That is true. I totally forgot about that. On yeah, to the, the finals. <clears throat> Man, I ain't going to lie. I, it was cool to see a first-time winner of the season, no matter what happened in the finals. But I don't yeah. know anybody that didn't want to see Lil Richard get his first dub, you know. And uh, Oh, yeah, but it's, it'll come. Yeah, yeah. it will. <clears throat> All but good things. He done his jam, man. He was 011, you know, win a 687. Hector was 026 and went 83. So it was 020 at the stripe. Just, you know, probably missed the tune up a little or actually looking at it, he spun. It was a 109 short. So it just didn't, did not 60 foot probably. The track was tricky. I don't know how many pro stock cars and top fuel nitro stuff annihilated the tires. Like, there was a pedal fest or two, I think, that got one in the top fuel stuff or the, the nitro stuff. So I, I kind of listened to it on the way home from my race. But uh, I do remember hearing – I don't really know if Richard's bike spun or it bogged, but I remember when it left, I heard like a something. They were both think, close on uh, on uh, 60 foot, so, I mean, it, it might have done something, but – they, well, Richard's like I said, been nobody faster than 109. Oh, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. But I'm saying, yeah. like, they were, if you go back through the results, like, nobody was having great. Like, the round before, he was 107. So, yeah. he was he was slower, but. But if he um, was 107 that hit, he could have won that race. Right. But, yeah. and then Hector was 109 the round before as, as well. So, I mean, Hector yeah. only picked up marginally. I mean, they just, yeah. for whatever it, reason. I swear I remember hearing it leave, and it kind of, like, boom, like it bogged. And, yeah. uh. <clears throat> that's that's what I remember, but it was good racing, first time of the year winner, you know, like it wasn't a repeat winner or nothing. Um, 
Well, look, I'll Hector tell you one Jr. Thing. come from a really bad streak to a really good weekend and got the win. You know, so well, that's what was, I was gonna say. You don't, you can't ever count the runs no. out. Like first out of to two hundred, baby. Yeah, they just they'll pop up. I mean, and, and I, I'd like to see you know them figure out how to be more consistent because obviously they they can find they some did power. this weekend. Yeah, yeah, but um, man, you just I think can't I ever. might have heard Last one of the announcers they, uh, say Hector that, won uh, right. Yeah, Hector got a, it's like they just that's his home track. Yeah, yeah, they they they'll put wins together. You can't count <clears> them out. You gotta watch I, them. I want to say that I heard one of the announcers say that Pops was coming back. His dad was coming back. I mean, he's you know. Hey, I want to sure. say that I might have heard them say that he was working to get him <clears> back <throat> out there or something. I can't remember. You know, maybe uh, maybe he was staying home working on the engines to get Junior on top. I, I can't, maybe I misunderstood it, but. I would love to see Singer come back out. Like, it would yeah. be cool, you know. Yeah. Plus, he could mix it up out there for his son, you know, to potentially well, do know good in the, the past, championships. Yeah, I know in the past he's come back just for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Help him out. So, uh, Might be yeah. about that time, you know, to come back and uh, throw some hands with them guys because, I mean, might be. it's like riding a bicycle, you know. I mean, Hector Jr. was the first to 200 guys, so he's not no puppy, you know. He knows no. what's up. No doubt. Um, I'm gonna see right now what the entry list looks like. Um, I do not see a senior on the list, so I don't think we'll be seeing him. Um, but this coming weekend, Z Max Dragway, the Carolina Nationals, uh pending nothing happening, I'm gonna be down there. So I look forward to getting y'all some coverage and some stuff, but uh yeah, let's see. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Looks like we got fifteen entries. So whoever About the average, whoever qualifies number one is going to get that lucky buy, right? Or do they do it some weird way? No, I mean, well, this past weekend, Gage got a competition buy and then got a earned got buy, a true buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were at fourteen bikes, right? Yeah, and uh, uh, Kelly exploded a motor, so. And they just uh, she did not actually. Oh, she didn't blow a motor up. Are you there? Yeah, I, I was just making sure I counted right as 15. No, she did not because for I seen some uh, her she made a post that I saw the other day that specifically said just to let everybody know I did not blow any motors up this past weekend. And I believe she said, I'll pull it up. I don't want to butcher it. I think she said something like she she wasn't feeling good on race day. Really? I yeah, and she I just decided. That. Well, somebody posted that. Oh. That was, okay. yeah, somebody said that or posted it. It was out there. Um, She said, yes, yeah, two days ago, she said, sometimes you have to take a step back before you can move forward. I was not feeling 100%, 100% and thought it was in my best interest to not race. She said, we did not have a catastrophic engine failure, as was said on NHRA. Okay. Um, 2024 has been a season doing what's best for us and our amazing support system behind us. Thank you to all our sponsors. and supporters. So basically, NHRA fed you boys some bad information. Yeah, it was NHRA. They, Unbelievable. They, they trying to stir that pot, too. <laughs> and CNN. <laughs> oh lord almighty. oh man uh, but we, uh really get some unsubscribes there <laughs> eh, not really all the news media sucks Honestly, if y'all my I opinion care. yeah i don't care um but uh the 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 weekend was cool because two you know two people in the final that hadn't won this year and uh it was going to be a hometown win for either one of them because richard's philly and the ronas are you know philly philadelphia so it was going to be Are cool. They from there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's her home tracks, what they say. I mean, I'm, I guess they're not from there, uh, but that's gotcha. like home base. So, right, right. Oh, um, New York. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. They're in New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's their home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Close yeah. track. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, either way, so it was we'll cool. See. You know what? It's, it's <laughs> for all the talk of there not being parody. Um, and, you know, whatever. Like it's just me and Dustin's opinion, not to me. I mean, this is shaping up to be, you know, end of a little, season, a little spicy. Yeah, it's good. Exactly. Anybody it's could win. Spicy. Yeah, it's getting spicy. You had Gage barely get the win over Andy at the Angie. Sorry, Angie at the U.S. Nationals, and then uh, come into was this was the first countdown race, or was the U.S. Nationals? U.S. Nationals was the last one before, right? 
Yeah, yeah this is the first countdown. So the race. first countdown race, and you know, arguably, arguably the two favorites, Gage and Matt, um, they they fall in the semifinals. So, um, yeah, it's it's getting spicy, as Dustin said. So I will try my best to get us some good content and coverage over the weekend, assuming I do make it down as scheduled. So that's the NHRA. Is it my turn? Stuff. Um, Talk AKA. about my pain. You know what? Um, you know who I'm looking forward to seeing this coming weekend. Who? Larry. Uh, Larry McBride. Larry in Boo yeah. in Boo. Yeah. Shout out to Boo. But yes, shout out. We left him out. Larry Mc Spider Man McBride. Um, in the Hulk, Jimmy Brantley. They're big supporters of the podcast. I sent Mr. That's the big Steve dogs, man. McBride a great care package. Oh, uh, did you? Week. Oh, yeah. I, I, so we, I ran into Larry and Steve briefly at the last XDA event, and unfortunately, yeah. that's all it was. Um, I'm sure Larry got sidelined and couldn't make it all the way down to the woods where we were. But um, I was talking to Steve, and I, he was like, how do I get one of them Red Hill shirts? And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I, I must have dropped off five or ten shirts at Virginia. He's like, Larry didn't give me none of them, and I burst out laughing. So I, I made a special care package to Steve McBride and sent it down to the shop uh, after that. So look yeah. forward to seeing him. Hopefully they weren't rocking him this weekend. We'll see. <clears throat> Yeah, I, they might. We'll see. I know Larry is. Larry's got a special uh, shirt when he yeah, races. Yeah, yeah, he sure. wears, There ain't no doubt about that. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised shirt. to see some uh, some being worn. We'll see. Yeah, I'll get some pictures for sure. Um, all right, what is next on the agenda? Oh, this coming weekend we got SDBA back in action. There is still time to make plans to head to. There's shootout spots available. There's early testing on Friday instead of the regular testing. Okay. Where where are we racing at? I don't know. Um, Alabama. Lassiter uh, Mountain. Lassiter Mountain. You ever race uh, there? No. I'm I'm shaking in my boots. Never been there before. <laughs> it's in Mount Olive, uh, Alabama. Mount Alabama. Olive. That's like familiar. I feel like there's a Mount Olive, Tennessee. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that guy, the YouTube video that he says, I do not free base cocaine. And he calls it <laughs> and he calls it Alabama. So that's why I call it. <laughs> he yeah, says man. I was at that rehab center in Alabama. <laughs> if you haven't ever seen that video, you is that watch the it. Yvonne? No, no, no. This Sounds is like old. This say. is like a oh, okay. 1980s model like clip of this guy. And he's oh, like, man. I'll take a toot now, a toot, or if somebody offers you some, it's just disrespectful, but I do not <laughs> free base cocaine. That's what he says. <laughs> oh man. Uh, anyway, I'm this free year base was about anything been... right now. My neck felt better. Gosh dang boy. This year was supposed to be in my redemption season. Yeah. We have me screwing me and being up from winning to go to Vegas last year. And Let me hold was, you up real quick. First off, y'all, just a little backstory. Last year, Dustin told me, he said, look, he said, I'm going to go run a couple races at Bristol to qualify, you know, and be on their, their bracket finals team. We're going to the bracket finals. I'm going to try and win the race, and we're going to Vegas. And I said, let's get it, boy. And I have faith in my homie. Like, I mean, look, if Dustin Lee tells you he's going to do something – you can usually take that to the bank. I mean, he's going to do it in the best of his ability, and that's that's why y'all always see him in the garage working, making sure his shit's top notch. Like me, y'all know I don't work on nothing. Like if my shit falls apart in a burnout box, it is what it is. Um, but Dustin's prepared, and let me tell y'all, he fell what six thou short of making it to Vegas last year. Made Five it to the six. finals um, yeah. of the Division Two race, and the winner goes to Vegas and. You know, tight race, close racing, both double O uh, on this tree and and just came up on the losing end of that. And look, I know he was upset, but for someone to tell you that they're going to do that at the beginning of the year and damn near do it, like it it, it was impressive. So anyways, I just want to give the backstory. So you, you went back for round two this year. Yeah, I was uh... – <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, it was the only race I've cared about all season. Like it was the only race that I – was personally excited about going to because I feel like I'm good enough to win the race. I feel like that I am the guy to beat at that race just because I'm really good at delay box racing. 
I, for somebody that didn't do it for such a long time, I feel like I'm very good at it. And uh, damn, I was. I was. I mean, off the trailer, my bike was set up at my local track. I went to my. I went. I made one pass at Knoxville two weeks prior to this race on that bike, and I was 019, and it went 568. And we go down there, and I got there, guys, Tuesday night or Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. to test on Wednesday. It done nothing but rain. It rained <laughs> off and on Wednesday and Thursday, basically. Both days got squashed. But we did get to see the sunshine Thursday evening for, for the first time. So had a great time with Jerry and uh, David Young and Dalton. You know, we went out, uh, me, Jerry, and David Young, before Dalton got there, went to dinner. Uh, Thursday night and me and Jerry went out to dinner Wednesday night. He got me, he got me quote unquote out of the house because I was trapped in that camper all day, losing my damn mind. Um, and Friday come around and we had promised that we were going to get to do something. There was no testing. We was going to get one time run and go straight into a gambler's, which in my opinion, I would rather test and race. That's cool. I'll just uh, send it like it is and we'll see where we're at. And Ironically, I looked at the bike and I looked at the weather and I thought, man, this thing's going to go a 570 with this terrible weather because it's like super humid. And um, I left everything else the same. And I sent Ben a photo of my dial board had a 570 and the bike went 69.8 and I was 018 on the tree. Confidence level and myself and the bike was there. And um, that's the hardest part of this this motorcycle, in my opinion, is just dialing it because it's a nitrous bike and it's on motor and that nitrous fuel and it, you know, the weather really, thankfully me and Ben got blessed with the weather, not really throwing us big, big curveballs this weekend. Like it did last year, last year, boy, it no, took a swing. But you can uh, confirm with uh, my lovely wife that I, in fact, did bring my weather cheat sheet along with me to the park on Saturday, <laughs> like, had it with me. You could it just took a picture, bro. <laughs> I did, but it's like, yeah, but then you're like, I'm I gotta be texting gotta you back and like and yeah. then I yeah, and then it's small. No, I brought yeah. the full size laminated. So me sheet. and Ben have this thing now, and next year it's gonna be the same way unless he's there fucking with me. I'll like, be there next year. Mark my words. Like we have we PB and J this. Like I I feel like that's the only race that I feel it's necessary to text Ben what the bike did and what the weather was. Just because last year was so awesome of what we did. For me to go all the way to the finals after 10 years of never doing it. And uh anyway, we go into first round of the gamblers race and I missed it. I thought, man, I missed the tree a little bit, but it was good enough. Um, the other guy, he had a problem. I think he ran off his dial quite a bit, uh, like a tenth or something. I was 025 and I got off the gas and had room and took the win. And uh uh to add to that on the way back from the pass a jerk on a scooter on the inside of a blind curve hit me. Um, thankfully it just, his tire hit the exhaust and barely scratched the, the fairing. So it could have been way worse, but I was, I had to woo saw myself. I'm not grabbing this guy by his vocal cords. And, uh, cause he got in my face and said, you're flying when I was in a legit 90 degree turn on a 77 inch motorcycle. Like you're just not flying around that curve. And, I also was cautious of that, and uh, thankfully I was. Anyway, uh, round two in the gambler's race, I was 009. The other guy went 005 red, and I, me and Ben predicted a 566, and it went dead on, dead sure. six, out the back. <clears throat> the bike Friday night loved 566. That was her jam. Like, that's what we left on it for – Two or three rounds. Um, round three, I was 002. I was racing. Um, was I racing Stewart? I think that round. And I was fired up. And no, no, I was racing uh, Santi Rodriguez, who I lost to in the final last year. And uh, I wanted that one. And uh, didn't touch the box for nothing, guys. I was just fired up. And uh, I got all of it. I was 002, went a 566 again. <clears throat> and then third round, I was 002 and went 566 again, I think. And unfortunately, after third round, we got uh we got the South Georgia curfewed. And I felt really good about it. We were down to I think eight bikes and we split. 
and called it a night and then went back after it the next morning. Um, in the main race, there's no time runs. There is uniquely a first round buyback. Um, so that kind of makes you not really worry about it, but I was just wanting to test mine and Ben's abilities more than, more than anything. <clears throat> and, uh, I can't remember I'm trying to see here if I got it on my phone. I do. It's all yeah. a blur to me, but, and, and I was not drinking also year before I was drinking. <laughs> I was drinking. Yeah. And tuning. I was like, I was like, oh my God, computer so, like this. Me and Ben kind of played it safe, and we just uh, we decided to dial a 68 or a 67, and I, I was going to be the judge of it when I got to the lanes, and I threw it on an 8. And the guy I raced was just terrible. Ben actually is like, that guy shouldn't buy back, which he's actually a super cool guy. He's just old, and he didn't hear him call us, and he rushed the lanes, and he was just in a predicament, you know, because we sit for two hours in the rain. Um, but I was 013. And way off the yeah, gas. No, no disrespect, but yeah. I mean, like when some, especially if you're box racing, you see some. What was it? It was bad. Point one six. Yeah, that's bad. That's a bad miss if you're hitting the bottom, y'all. So I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, <laughs> like nothing against you, dude, brother, old man, old dude, whatever, getting it on. But like, man, that's bad. So I don't know what happened there. Meanwhile, I didn't touch anything. I mean, I <clears throat> I didn't change the box. I, it was the same as yesterday. So realistically, if I got after the tree, I could be double O two. And, uh, that's where I left it. And in round two, that's what I was. I was double O two. I raced, um, Mr. Stewart and he was O 17. He dialed a five sixty two. He went a five sixty one with a two. I dialed a five sixty seven, went a 66 with a three. So I won by one thou. Um, when I caught him, I rolled off the gas, and when I got back in it, he just let me go, and I caught it and got off the gas, thankfully, just in time, um, or I would have broke out more than him. Um, I wanted to dial a six that pass, but with the, the rain and stuff like around, I was afraid that it was going to choke the bike up one, so I just went with a seven because I knew I could run it. And, man, this is when heartbreak, you know, the heartbreak happens. We... You know, you sit there and you wait until you hear the class call before you. And they called Sportsman, who was before me, or uh, motorcycles. And we go in the trailer. I get my stuff ready. I, I send Ben a final text of, hey, this is the weather about to go up. We predict to dial in, you know, for a 564. And then it starts sprinkling. And we stood around for probably two hours. Um, I'm suited up with my pants on and stuff. Cause you didn't know when it was going to quit. It wasn't enough rain to like require drying anything. It was just, it needed to stop so we could race. And it was like a mist. And I guess I just kind of mainly beat the humidity and all that stuff. And I come and went up there, come off the button, thought I killed it. I was 052. Uh, the guy that I raced was 017. If I would have known that I didn't hit the tree, I could have still won the race. Cause I broke out four thou more than he did. Uh, but, you know, mistakes were made, and I guess I'm going to third time's a charm it next year is what I'm going <laughs> to say when I leave the what house. What was it going to run, though? What, you, what was the run completion? We predicted like? a 564, and by the 330, it was going to go a 564. Me and mm. Ben done our job. We done our jam. Um, that was the fastest dial-in the motorcycle had on all weekend. Mm -hmm. But 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 Ben's learning that motorcycle, and I know that motorcycle, and I'm like, man, it's going to pick up because – the humidity and the DA was just going down yeah, because it was getting dark. I remember the vapor was down a bit too. <laughs> yeah. And that's what yep. I was tracking on my, on my yep. cheat sheet that yep. you get with your university of wind membership. <laughs> yeah. But the silver lining of the deal was, is team Bristol had four motorcycles. It was me, Jerry Turner, Dalton Markham and David Young. So that's I was the only one group. that lost round three. And um, so the next round in round four, David Young raced the same guy I raced and had a bat missed the tree and lost. But Dalton and Jerry continued on. Uh, round five, uh, Dalton and Jerry continued on. And in the semis, the way they do this is, is a team don't have to race each other until they have to. Ironically, the guy that beat me and David Young was the only person that didn't have a bye. So he got the bye, which forces 
two team track bikes to race each other, which was Dalton and Jerry. So they don't they they do, say that again though. I didn't. You will not it. have to race a Bristol motorcycle until there's just not enough bikes left to split it apart. So how how does that work then? It's just like the all... guy comes through the lanes and he asks each person what track they're from, and he keeps going until he finds a problem, and then he might make people in line swap places oh, to you. fix it or whatever. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we love it because you just go up there. You know, if you're beside somebody that your teammate don't matter, they're going to fix it now yeah. until until yeah, the yeah, situation. Yeah. You know, right, and right. Uh, everybody had a cool, bike, so they they yes, I love it. It's awesome, and uh, it tries to help the t- you know because there's actually at the division finals team points, so every mm-hmm. win that you get, like your track get, gets a point. You know, so they're they do that to not screw the 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 tracks out of the team points, and uh, anyway. The South Georgia 11 o'clock curfew hit us again, and I was really hoping they would finish it. Two reasons. Everybody was racing. Everybody was in a groove. It was all going good. And I saw one. I've been there since Tuesday, and I was going to love nothing more to wake up at 7 or 8 in the morning and roll out and head home. But <laughs> they hit the curfew, and I was not leaving until the race was over. So we get up the next morning. You know, Uncle Jerry, like clockwork, shows up with the same breakfast for me that he had the day before and bull peanuts that he got the day before. It's like, look what I got. You know, nothing changed. Everything was the same, except I didn't get to unload my motorcycle. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was uh, helping uh, Jerry and Dalton if they needed anything. And we go up there and Dalton and Jerry was James Bond together. They were both 007 on the tree and Dalton's bike didn't shift for a reason. And, uh, Actually, he sent me a picture today. He thinks his shift shaft's tired, so he's going to replace it. That's probably the problem. But Jerry was a machine. The road to the final, he was trip zip, 002, 002, 007. I mean, I feel like I was doing great, but Jerry showed up in race day. Mm -hmm. Like, he was on kill doing his thing. And uh, ironically, the guy that was sitting on the bye that beat me and David Young, he had a bye, and, man, he all but ruined it. Like he didn't come off the button and he backed out of the beams. They had to reset the tree and reset him to make his pass. And then the bike busted up the whole run. Like it was just worst case scenario if you're sitting on the bike the next morning, other than the yeah. bike just not firing up and you couldn't break the beams. Um, but uh, that's true. So Jerry rolls into the finals with a nerve wracking pass in the semis because he didn't know what to do, but got it done. And actually had the advantage, you know, at that point because the other guy didn't make a good run. And and Jerry was like 012 on the tree and just laid it out there and he got the dub and he's going to Vegas. And it was so cool to to, you know, me and him, of course, had plenty of time to BS and talk and life things. And I don't know if some of you guys might not know Jerry Turner, but they don't make them better. Like he's like, a good nicest person. Nicest guy I've ever met. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He's uh He'll give you the shirt off his back. Or, yeah. I mean, hell, he's give me and being his motorcycles to ride. Oh, yeah. Like Jerry's who got me into it. I mean, I'm going to tell a story about Jerry Turner right here that I've never told anybody. Ben knows the story. My first <laughs> event win at Rockingham. I've been wanting to say this for a long time. My first <laughs> event win at Rockingham. Wow! Hold I on, raced... hold on. Let me let me hit stop record. We're breaking it out now. No, let's do oh, it. I know, I know. Uh, wow, I don't this give is a shit. big. This is big. So my first event win at Rockingham. I raced Ben. I don't remember what round it was. It might have been third or fourth round, whatever. And I beat Ben, but when my bike left. It. I felt something. I get back to the trailer. I pull my clutch cover off. This is like 2014 or 13, Ben. It was something like that. It was, I think it was 2014 or 13. Uh, it was 13 or 12, dude. It was, <laughs> it was if 13. anything, it was 13. Right. And uh, I pulled the clutch cover off and I had a, a, them stupid springs on a Hayes clutch at the time that go across. Ben was one that got us all buying Hayes clutches because he got one and it worked great for him. But those springs could not like handle Dustin Lee. Like I raced too much, they would break and, tear things up and i'll never forget uh Stu had just lost on jerry's 14 and Stu goes just ride my 14 i'm like he goes what's the worst can happen you don't know what to dial it you've, you've only rode it one time ever and i got my license for nhra on it years ago it had to be 13 because that was yeah, the last was, time i done nhra yeah, so it was in 14 for sure and by the way y'all yeah. at this time like dustin was kicking ass any local track but it's like 
that y- y'all probably could don't not even never remember win this. a big race. But yeah, Dustin went to a bigger race, uh, and yeah, it was you know basically third, second, third, fourth round exit. Like, yeah, like that and was common. I looked at Jerry and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I put my sticker on his bike and go up there at Rockingham in the lanes. And lo and behold, they walked up and my double O light against Ben got me the buy. <laughs> so what did Dustin do? He threw a 930 on the side of the bike, the same dial he had on his Busa. And damn, if I didn't go dead on, like I went 930 on B- Jerry's clutch ZX14 straight down Broadway. And it was on then. That was I, like I, what, fourth I, round or something? Yeah, something like that. And, you know, I rode Jerry's motorcycle to my first ever big race, like, you know, series race win yeah, ever. It was a my rock race, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it was. And, uh, if I could tell y'all like Tamara was crying and it was crazy, like, cause I didn't, to be honest, I thought I was done. Like I, I rode Jerry's bike at Ben's big bike race at Bristol and I got license passes on it. That's the only time I've ever rode it. <clears throat> so I didn't even know its habits or know anything. And Jerry said, you can do it. You're good. And I, <laughs> and he, and he is, you know, he I was remember riding. sitting up in the stands watching me. Yeah. It and they would wild. announce Dustin Lee on his high boost. <laughs> <ZX-14. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, um, you, you were definitely not known enough for anybody to catch it. No. Either. And I'm a full that, believer. To be fair, is that Rockingham and pretty much anything went back then, back yeah. then at Rockingham. Well, I, I'm a firm believer that I don't believe in the, the motorcycle brake and you can't race rule. If you're bad enough oh, on brake to jump on a bike, I don't care if a dude changes bikes every round. If he's yeah. bad enough to do that, kudos, bro. Like, you're dope. I'm like, with you, you 100%. Kill it. Like, yeah. that's just, I mean, let's You're be screwing real. yourself. That's a, that's a dumb rule, period. Yeah, um, yeah. It just worked out that Dustin somehow got the buy to basically it was more than shake anything it down. else to shake down a <laughs> confidence run. Yeah. But like, you know, he jumped yeah. on it and we're like, well, this isn't going to last long. And then he comes up. I remember being in the stands and I'm like, how the hell did he get a buy run? He got a buy run. And we're like, how would, how could you get that lucky? And he comes back, he's all smiling and laughing. And we're just, yeah. We're like, all right. Well, I couldn't believe it go. went dead on. Like, and I we was just like, kept watching <laughs> round after round and like, look at the, Oh, sorry, my dog's dreaming. I was like, "What the hell is that barking now?" Um, like at the time, and I, I, but you know, look, Dustin and I are getting older, and like, you know, once you get older and wiser, your views change. At the time, I remember thinking like, "That's that." To me, there was no even then. I was like, "There's no advantage. That's just strictly a disadvantage to jump on a bike that you pretty much you know have ridden like once ever. No it's doubt. definitely a disadvantage. Don't know what's going on. I." At the time, like I wouldn't have done it, but I didn't care that he did. Well, you were in the mix no... for like points and stuff at the time. Well, I was I'm just, just saying, like yeah. that was back then too. Where like I mean, you know, like I would have never let my my brother, or you, or somebody else win. That's real tight with me. If we were, you know, running for something now, I don't honestly, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. if I if I can have my brother or you or somebody win a championship and I and I can't win it, then whatever. Anyways, it, it was that man. You just you just told a story. I've been wanting to say stuff. this for a long know, time, and about, it was the time about to do it. Ten years plus, yeah. And uh, it, it's uh, you know, my I call Jerry Turner my uncle Jerry because there's photos of Jerry sitting on a bed beside me when I was a baby. He used to date my aunt, so <laughs> he is legit to me, my uncle Jerry. Like, yep. I don't know if anybody ever heard me talk about my uncle Frank. He took me racing. Guess what? Jerry Turner took me racing. Like oh, I was yeah. a grown up and he was like, I'm already going. Just bring your bike to the house. And you can go with me. And I did that all the time. Actually that race, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, cause I didn't have the money and Jerry just, he's just a caring person. And there's nobody that I would ever say that didn't deserve it. Like he's, he deserves it for sure. Oh, he's literally the most generous, caring person. And he loves this sport so much. I mean, yeah. you know, he, he got me into He's created it. so many racers yeah. too. Oh yeah. He's yeah. literally ben. the reason I raced yeah. motorcycles. I was racing cars back then. And, and long story short, I mean, I've told it before, but it was when I worked at Bristol, Jerry convinced me one night after a, a street night event that I was working, he kept on me about riding, come race bikes with him during the bracket race because that's the only thing I didn't work back then. And uh, I think I showed up one time on my Harley Sportster. Man, that was just, it was not fun. It was embarrassing. It was it was not cool. And he stayed on me. And one night I rode his bike up and down the return road. 
Because I told him, I was like, man, I want to tear your bike up. And I didn't know enough about him that I was like, first thing I said, I was like, well, I'm going to tear your clutch up trying to change gears. He's like, you just hit a button. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. He's like, you hit this button. He showed me the air shifter setup. And I was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. And then I went down the return road and that was all she wrote. And uh, literally, I think, shit, I think it was the next weekend. He, he, I showed up to the bracket race. There's the bike. There's a set of leathers, like everything. He brings it literally. ready to go. He's the best bike owner. Yeah. Like, he just... Your in race that, in that winter, that winter, I bought yeah. a Hibusa used from David Snap. Um, yeah. your buddy David had like 50,000 miles on yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> like 50,000 center stand saddlebags. And yeah. we, I brought it straight to Jerry's uh basement garage, and uh, me and him built it over the winter with used parts. Yep, sure did. But and, yeah, Uncle uh, Jerry, two time <laughs> division two champion, three time NHRA world finalist. Actually, he's a uh, yeah, yeah, he's a yeah. uh, Three time, time division two champion and then two time attendee of no. the, the He's he won division di two three times. No, right? twice. I he corrected me the other day. Oh he went he's oh, oh what the hell? balloons. Yeah. Oh. Two time division two champion. Oh, the one time he won the race of champions. Yep. Yeah. And, and it he was, was a year, wild card. Yeah, he was the first yeah. wild card. Yep. That's what he had okay. to correct me for. Oh, okay. That's okay. the first thing I told him when I talked to him. I was like, what's up, three time champ? And he's like, Well, technically. I was like, damn it. <laughs> the first thing I told him when he got back was, you know, you're going back. You ain't got to go all the way to California. You just got to go to Vegas. And third time's a charm. Yeah. And so there's, you know, I don't know exactly who all's going to Vegas to race. Um, they better watch out. Jerry yeah. Turner's gonna be there. For it's sure, be awesome. Our uncle Jerry's coming, coming to play, y'all. Um, so yeah, that me was and Ben it. should just fly there just to be there. I swear yeah, it'd I be so cool. It. I actually yeah. told him if he couldn't find anybody to ride with him, and Tiffany will kill me. But I told him I might because I was already telling going to play go with you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, at that point, you and I are just rooting Jerry and Dalton on, but uh, and we love you, Dalton. But uh, yeah, I mean, know, I, uncle I, Uncle Jerry just that's 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 fine. really home for us. That's mm -hmm. home. So, yeah, I mean, realistically, if, if Dalton beat Jerry, I'd want Dalton to win. You know what I mean? So, oh, was, yeah. You know, I wanted Team Bristol win -win. to be good. And, 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 and Red, that does DR at Bristol, he sure does love his bike guys right now because <laughs> two years in a row, we've stuck them in the finals. And uh, I'm I'm happy that he's happy. And if you ever met Red at Bristol, usually he's serious. But at the bracket finals, Red is so happy. Like he just wants us all to do good, you know. And, oh. uh, it was very cool, and I already told him to put me down for next year. He just laughed. I said, "I ain't gonna quit until I get it, boss." And uh, you know how I am. I'm at my bucket is very empty, and that's the one thing that's still on it. But you know, unexpectedly, I might I'm going to IHRA Worlds here soon. So you never know. We'll see what happens. Yep, yep. Um, what else we got to cover? Is that about it? Man, I think that was a mad thrash of a lot of info it in was. a short amount of time. Um, it was, I will so go over this. Recap. So we got SDBA yeah, coming up this weekend. Um, if you're local to me next weekend, Knoxville has a JJ arm drop, no prep deal. Uh, for me, the weekend after is XDA. And then, um, the weekend after that is IHRA world finals for me. And then mm -hmm. I got a little break and then, um, SDBA last race is the next yeah. thing on the list. I do also want to shout out real quick uh, uh, one of our school members, Mr. Robert Williams. Man, yeah. Robert, he he's man, he's a faithful. versatile he, racer. <laughs> he joined he joined the school like off the rip, and he's been a member for you know basically he's not afraid for the to whole learn. time, the whole time. And you know, good bracket racer, index racer, but man, literally, pretty much has been grudge racing his turbo Hayabusa for the last year year and a half and has had lots of issues arise right and this man i mean he reminds me of you to be honest dustin i mean he has no quit so i seen him i had no clue where he was racing this coming this past weekend but i seen him post like <laughs> the week last week like man i i I'm getting this thing done. I don't care if I stay up and uh, damned if he didn't get this bike, like engine back together, put in the bike. I think he said, started up for the first time Thursday, clock, Thursday night, 10 o'clock loaded. The trailer was on the road by 11 that night and showed up to this war in the woods. Okay. 
It's now, a big, I've, big, sketchy ass racetrack that these car guys go to, and they've loud bikes the last two races. Yeah. So, like, I, I'd heard of it and I kind of knew what it was, but I had no clue, like, that's what he was getting his bike ready for and all. I didn't even think it was, like, even close to him, to be frank. Um, anyways, sure as shit, you know, Sunday, I'm, I'm, browsing through facebook and i see our boy robert got the dub man took that bag 7200 one war in the woods so shout out to our school member who's a badass grudge no prep racer too didn't even know it so uh his medallion ships out tomorrow a little extra hardware to go with that 72 hundo um you know, a good racer is versatile. They can do anything, oh, yeah. and he's proven it. And that's why I'm going to do the JJ Arm Drop thing, just because it's different. <clears throat> it's something I ain't done. I might learn something. So, if my it's if it's hard on my motorcycle and I start spinning a lot and stuff, I probably just yeah. bail out. But I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, look, I ain't gonna lie. After I seen that, that like got me excited. I briefly thought about like no prep would be cool, and I was like, nah, I don't have the energy. Well, that me. track it wouldn't be. It's got guardrails and it's just <sighs> yeah. Well, not yeah, ideal, not you know. I mean, I don't um, mind guardrails as long as you're on a good track. You know what I mean? But if the track's sketchy, then you mm, might end up there. Like, yeah, I, don't, not... I don't like guardrails, period. If I <laughs> if I can pre-plan and prevent, I, I don't participate. Yeah. Um, let's give away a couple gift certificates tonight. But listen, we are about to give away some good stuff here in the next couple of weeks. Just to let y'all know we're the year's we, ending guys. We saved up some of the bigger giveaways, the BST wheels, the gen two clutch. Uh, we still got Penske shock. We're going to start handing these things out. Um, if you somehow aren't signed up, there's still a little bit of time and a couple spots left. You're welcome to, we haven't hit max capacity, but um, we're getting there and you know what? If you don't, that's cool. It's even better odds for all our loyal subscribers. So let's give yeah. away some stuff. And if you're quick. into gambling, you can add another one under your wife's name. Just I saying. Love gambling. Where am I at right now? Can we see it? Yep, it's pulling up. Yep, we got a wheel spinning. All right, <laughs> let's do shuffle shuffle it uh more than three, right? Yeah, time? let's do something different this time. Let's do oh, shuffle let's... it ten times. I found it the other day. How the heck do you customize to there change the time? There you go. 30 More. seconds. 30. Try, yeah. Do 39. That's your number. There you go. And then shuffle it 10 times. 10 times. Yeah. Just click it 10 times. Shuffle, 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 right. shuffle. You're going to count. Yeah. Uh, wait, I feel like it already shuffled it. Just click it 10 One, times. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Boom. All right. All right. We'll Here do we two. Go. We're going to give away an MPS Racing $50 gift certificate and a Schnitz Racing. We appreciate their support. They uh, supplied us with a lot of gift certificates this year. And uh, yeah, you can get plenty of great, pretty much anything you want from those two companies. Yeah. Yeah. They, they yeah. sell just about anything, yeah. anything, everything. All right. Everything. First winner, we will do I'm trying to guess who it's going to be. PS racing, bro. Is it going to be close to Boyd it again? Might be my brother. Oh yeah, they're going to make it. It might be your brother. Nah, it's going to be Nick Noble. What did I just say? We we're gonna... oh, oh shit, Stephen. <laughs> All right. Well, look, y'all seen that couldn't have been planned. Um, no. What did I just say he's going to win? Uh, MPS. Yeah, I mean, whichever one, it don't matter. Okay. You said you was going to do a snitch in MPS. All right. Well, congrats, brother. Yeah. He won't do anything with it. He'll probably buy a shirt or something. <laughs> All right. Um, right. Let's shuffle it. We'll do it three times this time. Yeah. One, two, three. three. Here we go. This one for the snitch racing gift certificate. 39 second spin. It'll yeah. stop on Ben's bike number. Ironically, while we was looking at the NHRA results, Ida that races top fuel has the yeah. same number as Ben. Who I, I hung out for a while with her in Vegas one year. Man, that was uh yeah, I'm a fan. I was, was a fan, even bigger fan. I just run. She it might be your fan. Number. Might be why our number thirty nine. <laughs> yeah, right. <I'm, laughs> doubt that. I doubt that. Let's see what we got. Dang, about got John Hall. Almost got somebody famous in here. No, we love all y'all. Is it gonna be Michelle? It's going to be a, a female. Might, Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Congrats, Michelle. You awesome. won 52 Schnitz Racing. Um, 
All right, it's been a minute. We're going to shout out the sponsors one more time because without them, we might not be here. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, might not. No, we, I'm, we, I'm getting sick right now. I just want to let y'all yeah. know. Ben got me sick at Virginia. He don't believe it. I don't it. really. That was a he month said ago, that he was bro. having random headaches. And then slowly after Virginia, I started having random headaches. And then now I'm starting to get stuffy. And it took his about that long to start. Man, we so just this, hold us F and man. Well, well let's just say it might be the weather. And you got the weather that I'm getting earlier than me. That might make sense. Look, all I can say is pretty much everybody I've been around for the last week has got a sinus infection, which those aren't. As far as I know, you can't like give that to somebody. So yeah. maybe it's not, but damn it. I'm telling y'all, I get sinus infections once or twice a year, just my allergies and where I live. And, you know, it got cooler uh, about two weeks ago. People started cutting their grass. So I'm like, man, this is a sinus infection. But I don't know. It, I might have been. I apologize if I got anybody sick, Dustin, anybody I was around. It's all good. It ain't bad enough to stop me. You know how I am. So I'll tell you what, my neck hurts bad i'd take that sinus infection back right now you need a tamara's got this um, you probably got one in your house too especially with tiffany uh heat and blanket and you put oh, your yeah. heat blanket on it no, and go like from hot to cold yeah put, put heat and blanket on it good. and then icy hot i'm gonna put an ice pack on it um put yeah some peas, that's frozen good. peas on it oh yeah yeah that yeah. sounds good Lay all your right head back in a recliner let's shout out these sponsors so i can go get some frozen peas on my neck that could have that almost sounded <laughs> uh, all right. worldwide barons. Yeah, you do it. Great. You want me, you want me to do it? Yeah. <clears throat> worldwide barons, Mr. Ralphie at Platinum, Monster Race Products, BST Wheels, MTC Engineering, Rocks Performance, Snitz Racing, DME Racing, Hard Times Parts and Service. Pitsky Racing Shocks, Spinning Ain't Winning, MPS <laughs> Racing, Montgomery Motorsports, Max ECU, BMF Motorsports, and the University of Winners. That's right. Man, it's cool, too. I keep seeing in my screen, like, where my mullet it appears and disappears, where the yeah, screen's yeah. trying to, like, cut yeah. it off for the background. Let yeah. me fluff this thing out for y'all. Look, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, this is the only reason. Y'all said you wanted a mullet. The mullet is back, baby perm free i don't need no perm my shit is on point all right that's all like a z in the side of your man i I know put some designs in there i had good good intention to do that to the last race but do like spencer's hand and put that rooster up there on the side yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, i could do that i could do that um i i was actually planning on doing some lightning strikes through it for the last race but yeah well, it's gonna we ain't even going to talk about that negativity yeah. in this. <laughs> Some bullshit. It's a call to being an adult. Happens, man. Happens. Um. Yeah. Anyways, look, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Listen to us. Ramble on. Um. We love it when y'all come up and, and tell us. At races. I had people this weekend, dude, at the Did bracket they? finals. Love the podcast. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> hey, listen, y'all keep on telling us those things because that keeps the podcast going. And I, I'm speaking from the heart there. Like, it's not, yeah. You know, yeah. I, we, if y'all, y'all quit well enjoying know, it, we're going to quit doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. Just say that. And, <laughs> and y'all know that, you know, I, now I have two, I have a baby and a toddler. Dustin's got a kid. We both have business, multiple Mine's businesses. Easy. I'm gonna start letting Harper fill in for me on uh, this thing. Sometimes I know, but it, it's it's a <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. So uh, you know yeah. that really does. Mowing season's almost us. over for me. That helps a lot. Yeah, like yeah, I'll know I'll be mowing. And actually, we've been mowing my neighbor's yard too because he passed oh, yeah. away. So yeah, so Man, it, y'all keep y'all keep the enthusiasm and comments coming. We we really love hearing that. So all yeah. right, that's all we got for tonight. We'll see y'all, right, y'all next time. Glad we glad we got to finally do one two weeks late. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry, here. y'all. Who knows? Maybe maybe we'll have a special guest or something on sooner than later. Maybe yeah. I, I might line up some guests while something. you're uh, we'll figure while you're racing for a week that you uh you're just too busy. I might just get a guest on. I already got some Look, of volunteers. Not this weekend, but next weekend I have the JJ Arm Drop No yeah. Prep deal on Saturday and my daughter's birthday on Sunday. Yeah. Like. Bro, <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. All right. Y'all be safe. Go race if you can. Support local tracks. Support all these series. Oh, NHRO is this? Is it NHRO is this weekend? Oh, man. If we, I don't know. We're going to have to verify. No, it was now. this past weekend. They canceled it, didn't they? 
I don't know, did they? Yeah, it was supposed to have been in Ohio Valley and they canceled it. Well, let's verify. We don't want to forget anybody if we can. When's Man Cup race again, by the way? Uh, I, th- I thought I commented and left Hollywood I got a, a schedule. Let me look. Yep, you're right. It's postponed to October 11th weekend is uh, the next NHDRO. And then Man Cup returns to September action. 27th. So next weekend. Where they yep, race Carolina next Dragway. Carolina, that's the race I went to last year. I yeah, think. that's the race at the bracket finals was that last year. Actually, it okay. was that weekend. <laughs> oh. That's why we didn't get to go to church. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah, so uh, just so you all know, head out to these events. Support these bike series, y'all, that, that you know, they won't be around if you don't support them. So no. don't go out of means. Don't go out of pocket. We're not talking about that. But if, Yeah, if, if you can't afford to go, don't. If you want to yeah. go and you can. Hell yeah. Go give it a shot. Have a good time. See some people you ain't seen in a long time or meet new people. Yeah. Lots of great options here with the SDBA and then Man Cup and then you go XDA and then NHDRO. Support these series, y'all. That's it. That's all we got tonight. See y'all. We love y'all. Deuces. Peace.